Ricky Maru the Stealth Assassin is a backstabbing no good little trickster, and chances are he's standing behind you right now. Even if you manage to catch him, all of Ricky's spells give him a way to slip out of the encounter intact, rendering you sad and alone. Due to his permanent invisibility, the Little Prince is a global threat and Lord knows he's waiting and watching to stab you in the ass. You guys wanted this, so be sure to buy a gem of True Sight, otherwise you won't be able to watch the history of Ricky. Ricky is a melee agility hero who can pick off squishy targets quickly and jump out of the fight just as fast. Smoke Screen is his first skill which lays out a cloud of smoke in a small radius, slowing, silencing, and lowering the accuracy of all enemy units caught in the AoE. Units caught will also have their vision radius reduced to 200. Blink Strike is a point and click ability that allows Ricky to jump behind a unit and damaging them for a small amount if they are an enemy. This skill can be cast on allied units, although they won't receive damage which is a real shame. Some teammates just need to be slapped once in a while. Cloak and Dagger is a passive spell that grants permanent invisibility, as well as bonus auto attack damage based on your agility when attacking units from the back. Tricks of the Trade is Ricky's ultimate ability, having him combust into a mischievous cloud of knives, striking random enemy units from behind over the duration. While the skill is active, Ricky will pretty much not exist and cannot be targeted from any attacks or spells, sort of like Phase Shift. These strikes also count as regular attacks, so they can proc attack modifiers and on-hit effects. So go ahead and stack those data lists like I know you want to. And before I get into my normal routine here, please be aware that Ricky has a whole ton of different ultimate abilities, so I'm going to keep track of them here, using this nifty counter. Alright, let's move on. Ricky was part of the initial group of heroes released in the first versions of Dota, with a few differences as you can probably tell. His original model has a red shade as opposed to the purple that we're used to, and in the versions I played, his name is Ryu Hayabusa, a nod to the Tecmo character of the same name. Prior to 6.00, Ricky's skill set could only be described as a walking pimple. He'll pop up out of nowhere and ruin your life. Ricky, er, Ryu's original abilities were permanent invisibility, which is exactly what you think it is. Blink, exactly what you think it is. Critical Strike, exactly what you, you get the idea. The minute murderer's ultimate here is Death Ward. And yes, that is the same Death Ward as Witch Doctors, but this one doesn't require channeling. That means while you're carelessly pushing the wave on your own, the invisible threat of the stealth assassin will break from the shadows, lay a death ward down, and blink around like an ugly red mosquito until you die or rage quit. Whichever comes first. It would take some time before he would have a proper lore, but in the Gwinsu days, he is merely referred to as a sneaky sneaky sir. Like most of the heroes I've talked about and will be talking about, the stealth assassin started looking a lot more familiar once 6.00 rolled around. His skills received a complete rework, making him feel a lot less generic overall. Blink and Critical Strike were replaced by Blink Strike and Backstab respectively, having very similar functionality, but focusing on taking out individual enemies trying to run away from you. He also gained a new active spell in Smoke Screen, which slows, silences, disarms, and mini-stuns anyone caught in the radius. The mini-stun has the most annoying impact here, as it could be used to cancel teleports or channeling abilities. Finally, Permanent Invisibility had an upgrade to Ultimate status, although everything else about it stayed the same. As you can well see, our little horned boy had his name changed to Ricky Maru, a reference to the Tenchu series, which is more befitting than the hyperactive action ninja he was previously named after. He also had the joke name of Ricky Martin, reminding me how popular it was to shake your bonbon bon and live Vita Locas back in the day. Ricky Maru also had his color changed to the more recognizable purple, and a lore update added in 6.05 that fleshes out his character. In this backstory, Ricky Maru was the prince of the satyrs until the Burning Legion corrupted his kind, turning them into mindless jungle creeps. His motivation for battling comes from a place of vengeance as he wants to fight against the Scourge for doing this to his people. This piece of information justifies Ricky Maru's allegiance to the Sentinel despite having aggressive and hostile voice lines, and I think it's a really cool touch that his lore references the jungle creeps rather than sweeping it under the rug. In 6.04, the first major change happened, changing Smokescreen's disarm into a mischance instead. When Ricky gained backstab starting in 6.00, a little text pop-up would appear indicating the backstab damage had occurred. Though 6.05 removed this feature, which I consider a nerf because your enemies won't fully feel the tilting power of the dreaded text. In 6.10, Blink Strike had the added feature of being able to cast on allies, giving the prince a form of escape that he so desperately needed. In 6.17, a whole slew of changes showered upon Smokescreen, reducing its mischance, increasing the move speed slow, reducing the radius, and reducing the cooldown. In 6.55, Blink Strike moved Ricky behind the target instead of the front, which really makes the most sense when you think about it. This gives him the opportunity to immediately start procking those backstabs and get the job done a whole lot quicker. In 6.58, Smokescreen lost its power to mini stun enemy units, and it also no longer destroys trees in the cast area. Backstab also received an interesting change as its damage type was changed from magical to physical. Although this does make more sense, having that mix of damage was always nice in case you ended up playing against high armored enemies. We sure are going to miss you thematically inconsistent smell mechanic. Ricky Maru received a new earth port known as Nighthound, a bluer, more feral version of the tricky munchkin. 
I'll be upfront about it here, Nighthound is exactly what happens when you copy your friend's homework and are okay with getting a C-. His abilities are a 1 to 1 port and are named Smoke Bomb, Pounce, Backstab, and Invisibility. You submit something like this to Turnitin.com and I guarantee you're getting a 42% on that bad boy. His lore is pretty flaccid too. His story is just basically, Nighthound is a mysterious warrior who now fights for the Legion. Although a saving grace of all of this is the patented goofy New Earth voice acting. They all wish they were dead. I smell fear. <laughs> is it feeding time? <laughs> Ricky's abilities do appear in other games, although there are more bits and pieces that are taken rather than full ports like Nighthound. In League of Legends, Shaco uses stealth as his main mechanic, and his innate passive, also named Backstab, allows him to deal bonus damage when attacking enemies from behind. Akali also shares the smokescreen, invisibility, and blink strike aspects, but her overall gameplay feels way different from Ricky. Mobile Legends has an interesting take on the stealth assassin skill set with Natalia. She has a backstab and invisibility combo in her first skill, which resembles cloak and dagger to a good degree. There is also a smoke bomb that slows enemies down, a gap closer, and her ultimate attacks a bunch of enemies in an AoE. In Heroes of the Storm, Zero Tool does have a permanent cloak and basic blink, which to the untrained eye would have you believe that he is the Ricky of the game, but I would argue that Valera is much closer to the overall idea. She has a very consistent stealth, a whole lot of gap closing abilities, and one of her heroic abilities puts down a cloud of smoke, which, as we know by now, is a huge part of Ricky's purpose in life. Ricky snuck his way into Dota 2 on October 13th, 2011, making him the fourth hero released after the first international. Although his name has been shortened to Ricky, his name is still canonically the full Ricky Maru as he introduces himself in the voice lines. Ricky Maru at your service. Ricky Maru comes for you. This is a comforting detail because having a regular guy name like Ricky is pretty weird when you have characters like Zeus and Dark Terror running around. In his revitalized story, Ricky is still prince of his species, with the added detail of him being a middle child. Because his older brother was being prepared for greater things and his younger brother was being babied, Ricky the middle child was very much ignored and practically invisible. Speaking as a middle child myself, I can assure you that this is true. I am literally transparent in real life. Luckily for him though, this trait came in handy as the royal family was murdered one night in a rebellion, and Ricky was able to take advantage of his stealthiness and kill the guards on his way out. Sometime after this, he adopted the trait of assassination, which he seems to love by the way, and promises to seek vengeance for the slaughter of his family. The early item sets provide some more characterization for Ricky. For instance, the Wrath of the Highborn were ornate daggers that were smuggled out after the family was murdered, but Ricky presumably took them back through shanky methods. On that note, the Curse of the Highborn is a tail item that has his mother's crown sewn into the fabric, keeping a piece of his lineage on him at all times. Speaking of his parents, the Talon Occult Dagger is the weapon that actually killed his father, and he uses it in turn on his targets. The Bracer of the Talon Watch reveals that Ricky dressed up as the guards to escape the incident. And finally, the Burden of the Highborn item shows that Ricky has the goal of restoring his family's rule and taking his rightful place back on the throne. Ricky's voice lines don't make a big deal out of this, mainly focusing on assassinating his target. But a single rare voice line does reveal his long-term goal. I will avenge my family's slaughter. I'm not just doing this for fun, you know. 6.82 brought along a few significant changes. Ricky's base move speed, attack damage, and health regen were all reduced, so already not the best scenario. This was offset by the fact that permanent invisibility changed from being an ultimate to a basic spell, still providing invisibility, though it came with a much longer fade time. The spell also provided him with passive HP regen as long as he remained invisible, making his time in the offlane much more relaxing. Blink Strike became his new ultimate, still being a gap closer that dealt damage, but it came with a charge system and the ability to pierce spell immunity. I thought this was a good change, giving Ricky access to his signature ability a lot earlier, and providing him a power spike through his ultimate. In the following patch, Blink Strike was rebalanced to have a little more usefulness upon leveling it up. In 6.84, Smokescreen could apply its effects to Ancient, Roshan, and Creep heroes. It also lost the ability to slow attack speed for anyone in it, but it started slowing turn rates by 30% which obviously gave him more synergy with Backstab. In 6.86, a whole load of crap happened, so much so that Ricky was temporarily removed from Captain's mode for a bit, which is usually a good indicator of crazy changes happening. First off, his strength gain, agility gain, and armor were all reduced, and Smokescreen no longer slowed turn rate. Next up, Permanent Invisibility and Backstab put on a pair of Potara earrings and merged to become Cloak and Dagger. Like I mentioned in the breakdown of Ricky's skills, this new passive gives invisibility and the backstab effect, though the passive HP regen from Permanent Invisibility was dropped. Blink Strike became a regular ability again, losing its charge system and reverting back to the old mechanics. Ricky had an entirely new ultimate in Tricks of the Trade, allowing him to phase out and striking every enemy from behind in an AoE once per second. Overall, these changes made him a lot sneakier and allowed Ricky to add roaming to his arsenal. 
In an incredibly Ice Frog moment, Tricks of the Trade accidentally turned you into a walking death machine since you could stack Battle Furies, allowing you to eliminate your enemies with ease. In light of this, 6.86b made it so Tricks of the Trade only attacked enemy heroes, excluding illusions. This was made up for by having the radius of the skill increased, and the cooldown decreased. Cloak and Dagger also had its damage scaling increased, so there you go! In 7.00, a meme came to life as Ricky's Aghanim Scepter would allow him to cast Tricks of the Trade on an allied hero, hiding inside of them as the effect would occur. Pocket Ricky was a craze-induced shitpost written in 2015 by Reddit user PotatoLord17, which details an ag suggestion that Ricky become an item in another player's inventory, and Valve gave us the next best thing by having him inhabit a buddy on the battlefield. If current win rates are anything to go by, this was a great addition by Icefrog's part, with Aghanims having a 68% win rate on Ricky if picked up. In 7.07, .07, Smokescreen reduced enemy vision if walking through the cloud, which I'm all for since it fits in with the theme of the skill. Cloak and Dagger's backstab also gained the effect to crit and cleave, though its agility multiplier was reduced. Ricky also got a couple of fun new talents here at level 25. The left one makes it so that Cloak and Dagger no longer breaks invisibility on attack. So if there isn't any detection around, you could just womp someone to death without being seen. His right side talent increased the radius of Tricks of the Trade, making an entire section of a teamfight a possible death zone for anyone brave enough to venture through it. In 7.12, Tricks of the Trade was reworked, hitting one enemy at a time now, and it hits every unit in the radius, though it prioritizes heroes. This makes it kind of like a stationary Omni Slash, so I guess a, uh, 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 Uno Slash. Yeah, yeah, that works. Of all the purple horned bipedal douchebags, Ricky is definitely my favorite. You can totally call position 4 in the pregame, pick Ricky, build like a position 1, and no one would bat an eye. And that's amazing. Given that Valve has started releasing patches on a much more frequent basis, I can only assume that he's going to have a new ult every month. And that is going to drive me insane. I'm Dennis the Tall, and that was the history of Ricky. And uh, hey, I guess it's the end of the video again. And I haven't done any shoutouts ever, so uh, here we go. Raymond, let's play Dota soon. Chobas and Dominic Torres, you guys have been supporting me forever and, and I love you. Dazzle, get your own shoes, you broke asshole.